John, this began with a report about the future of some industrial lands in Etobicoke. Yeah, Dwight, the report recommended against building homes on the lands which are beside Canada's busiest rail corridor and a massive Metrolink's maintenance yard. But last week, Councillor Justin DiCiano asked for changes that recommended houses should be built there. DiCiano was supported by three other councillors. Declarations of interest, if there are any. Seeing none. It took 90 minutes for the City Hall Committee to reject a key recommendation in a report professional planners spent three years researching. I have a motion to go up on the screen. Councillor Justin DiCiano requested the report's findings be changed. All those in favour. It passed 4-2, essentially replacing the city staff recommendations with DiCiano's, that the lands be rezoned to allow homes to be built. The move benefits the owner of this land, Etobicoke Bay's Dunpar Developments, a builder DiCiano has had ties to. Dunpar owns three properties in the lands. It wants to build 72 townhomes and a three-story commercial building there. The lands in question are right over there across these tracks, the busiest rail corridor in Canada and beside that large grey building. That's the entrance to a massive Metrolinx rail maintenance yard. The city report said the lands are unsuitable for homes because they're too close to the tracks and to the Metrolinx maintenance yard. The report also noted that yard will soon be running 24-7 to meet the GTA's growing demand for rail service. DiCiano argues putting people nearby is on the right track to meet the city's call for intensification. Planners had recommended leaving the land for commercial purposes. So uh, uh, councillors go against city staff all the time. It's about actually what the community wants, not about what uh, the downtown uh, planners are saying is completely ideal. Community groups said they were against the idea. I've lived there for 58 years on the south side. This man, who lives across the street from the Judson lands, says it's bad now, but will be even worse for people closer to the rail yard. I live here, and if I could move the Willowbrook yards further away from home, I would. The only deputant who did want homes there... The land should be residential. The developer's representative. DiCiano has had ties to Dunpar for years. His twin brother Julian worked for the developer until last year. Dunpar openly endorsed DiCiano in the 2010 election, calling him the best possible candidate to bring this community to the next level. But the cost of printing and distributing the letter to voters went unreported. DiCiano's lawyer told CBC News the endorsement was unauthorized by the campaign and that DiCiano blames Dunpar for his election loss. However, auditors probing DiCiano's campaign finances found DiCiano was less than forthcoming about his brother's employment with Dunpar. During the next election in 2014, DiCiano co-founded the Jean Augustine Center for Young Women's Empowerment. Dunpar's owner sits in the board of directors of the charity that helped create the center. And the center is located in a Dunpar building. Finally, DiCiano bought a home from Dunpar the year before entering politics. One legal ethics expert says DiCiano did nothing wrong buying a Dunpar home or doing charity work with Dunpar. But according to law professor Trevor Farrow, he should have disclosed his dealings with Dunpar before voting. The changes will benefit the developer. These are the kinds of things where, even if not an actual conflict, the perceived conflict of interest is as important for uh, confidence in the municipal process. DiCiano disagrees. I've talked to the integrity commissioner on this, and I am not in a conflict as per the rules of engagement. The city's integrity commissioner's office wouldn't confirm to CBC News what, if any, discussions they may have had with DiCiano. The councillor says he'll continue to vote on issues relating to the developer. This is one of the largest uh, landowners in Ward 5. And if you think I'm going to sit on the sidelines while they come in and develop, uh, it's just not going to happen. And my, my residents are very much aware of the situation. John, the, the councillor clearly doesn't see anything wrong here. Well, DiCiano has maintained he would never vote on a Dunpar issue as long as his brother worked for the developer. In fact, his lawyer, his lawyer told us the councillor never has. But CBC News has found a recorded vote that took place three months after DiCiano was elected. He voted to approve a zoning request for Dunpar that was in line with city staff uh, recommendations. And DiCiano's brother at the time was still working for the developer.